Alright, welcome to the Clash of Anatolia, the tournament organized by Kasva for the Turkish players. We're here on Rocky Forest, which is a map I haven't actually really seen a lot of myself with uh, Cyclops here in the blue trunks on Mongols, a very nice iconic cavalry archer sieve. We've also got improved hunting, so gathering from this boar will be nice for them. But there's a lot of berries and not any uh, huntables out on the map other than right here in the center, so it'd be hard to try and make use of that unless you can get, you know, a mill forward here, which is something you don't really see a lot of in AoE 2, I don't think. You tend not to play as expansively with your resource gathering as you do in, say, AoE O or AoE 4. Um, but that's enough about Cyclops for now, because his opponent today is Rono. So, Rono on Bulgarians in the green trunks on a nice... Cavalry and Infantry Civilization. So, free Militia upgrades, cheap Town Centers, cheap Blacksmith Technologies. What's this Krepos thing? Not a unit, is it? Ah, that's right, they're like an alternative castle. A little bit like the donjon, really, but I think even beefier. So they're more like a slimmed down castle, whereas the donjon's more of a beefed up tower, if you know what I mean. Because the crep lost only requires stone, like the castle, but just less of it, while the donjon is a more expensive tower in terms of wood and stone, and that's available to the slabs, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's available to the slabs. So, players just, oh actually, Cyclops is going to be able to make use of the hunting mechanics here, because he can always just bring the Ibexes all the way back home. It is a bit of a trek. Both players are doing that right now. Apologies, I hadn't played this map and I would have thought, you know, even though you could do this, you can probably try and lame your opponent out of it. Or, you you know, it'd devolve into a very early barracks build style metagame. There is a lot of huntables on this map, they are all confined to the center here, we're all out in the outskirts, we've got berries, and most of the time just for safety, players will just gather back at home. It's not like AoE 4 where farms are that little bit more expensive outright that people will just, you know, they'll just sit back at home, you know, paradoxically. Even though the farms, you've got to constantly replace them, so they do end up costing quite a bit of wood by the end of the game. Um, the ratio of wood to food is still really, really good, ultimately, so... And yeah, people are really, really defensive with their AoE 2 build orders and playstyles. Compared to the other games in terms of sitting on resources. Pushing out with some mounted arms here. Holding up with a blacksmith as well. No other military production building early on. Must be trying to go for some upgrades. Well, Cyclops going for the range, so I imagine he's wanting to get archers and just try and use some spearmen to help deflect any.
cavalry transition that uh, Rhino might opt for here. The archer's going to be useful to try and pick away at the man at arms. Blacksmith, they're going to help keep the opponent out. Get these berry scatterers nice and safe. Look at the effects you can see. And picking the berries off the trees, all the leaves flicking everywhere. So early fletching upgrade. While wow, Rano would have gone for early. Early infantry armor is what he's grabbed here. They can engage these archers a little bit better, pretty much undo the uh, fletching bonus damage. You can't really do much about the bonus range fletching offers, but this way you can take really, really nice fights into Cyclops army. It also gives him the armor against the melee units. Skirmish going down now, but Cyclops has managed to bait Rano's scout there. He should be able to finish that off. At the same time, Rano Scott still got his man at arms and starting to get skirmishes so he can push into the archers here. Retreat at the moment. Turning around once he gets another couple of skirmishes in the mix. Cyclops going for a stables now. They have got quite a bit of gold on this map. That's quite safe, but they are eventually going to have to move out, get on top of this front side stone and gold here, and then really try and fight over what's in the middle here, and then overall. There's not a huge amount of stone or gold on the map because of all that. In fact, when they got the one, two, there for Cyclops for Brandon's got one, two as well. So I thought it might have been unbalanced, but I looked again and it wasn't. XD. So yeah, it's, I guess, a pretty normal distribution. It's just all crammed into the middle of the map. Well, the outside's got all these extra berries that AoE 2 players don't seem to actually bother going for at all. In most games. I mean, in lower level games, I'm sure people are more willing to experiment with no farm builds and just weird shit like that. Making it work. With a lot of villagers here in the center. He actually has gone for that front mill to go for the hunting. But there's not a huge amount back here to defend because he's also trying to raid Cyclops. And so he's attempting this tower, but it's going to take a while for it to finish off. And in the meanwhile, Cyclops is going to get five villagers. But, Rano is forcing Cyclops to have to commit to a tower of his own. And he's trying to fight with the villagers, which might end up working out because the archers and man at arms against that many villagers aren't really going to trade all that well. I mean, and he has skirmishes rather than archers and a little bit less range to it too. So, ultimately, that little trade of the two raids really benefited. Cyclops more than Rhino, but now Rhino is also under a lot of threat back at home again because the archers are still here sniping another couple of villagers. And GG, Rhino calls it there.